Today's episode is super special because I have the designer of my boat coming to see me and to look at my work. All of the dodgy, questionable work is to be judged by Hannah Cabone, who together with James Warham designed and did the drawings for this boat. She knows these boats inside and out. Anyway, that's gonna come a little bit later in the video. Let's get back to some questionable boat work. <laughs> Job of the day, take these clamps off, plane everything flat, and then put the last piece of wood in the beam. So before I start playing in, I'm gonna get all this epoxy out here because that's just gonna ruin my power planer blades. It looks really messy now, but it, it should clean up pretty nicely. So I just went and got a planer, a new planer. The belt snapped on my original one and I couldn't find any belts and I'm pretty, pretty uh, desperate to get this beam fixed. Absolute scorcher today. Also, check it out. Super long set square. 54 euros. I was tempted to get a Makita one. That would, be a, that would have been 200 euros. guy named Bass in this boatyard who has all the tools, all the tools. Festool chop saw, thousands and thousands of euros worth of equipment and he's lent it to me. He's gone away for the weekend and he's allowed me to borrow it. I'm not sure if I would trust me with these expensive tools but whoo, it is a good one and it works so well. I'm gonna fill up the rest of the beam with three pieces of this Akasha or something good quality softwood no knots no nothing it's just gonna layer it up glue and screw
Perhaps I'm changing the pump heads a little prematurely, but uh, I can't risk running out of hardener halfway through a big job like this. <laughs> I've been looking at it so much on video. Yeah. Looks like I've been here lots of times. Yeah, super nice to have you here. Great Amazing. job, looks good. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Hanukkah is here. Yeah, but finally. Who, for people that don't know you. Well, I'm the designer. Together with James, we designed this boat. I did the drawings of it. And uh, I was the one that uh, helped Mark decide to buy it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we looked at it together via WhatsApp and I said, I'm that old bad Phil, so it's a lovely boat. Yeah, <laughs> Go yeah. for it. Offer him 2,000 euros, he might take it. And he did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did, he did. <laughs> so that's where I come in. Amazing. Now I come to have a close BDI on the top. I know. Right? See what's going on and what else needs to do. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, obviously, know. some of my work is questionable. Would, you could probably say. <laughs> well, you're but. learning all the time, actually. You know, I've seen things you've done before that other people have questioned. And yeah, yeah. And you've done better next time. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Have you just put this on? This I've boot? literally just put this on. Well, that, that looks good. That's how it should be. I mean, you could have an even longer scarf, but it's better than a butt joint. Yeah. And uh, 
So this bit of plywood, was that just to get the thickness? Yeah. It's interesting to see. Yeah. It's done slightly different from the original drawing. There seems to be some extra plywood bits in there, but I can see another bit of plywood there. Maybe there just, is. Well, you've done the same here. Maybe he was just trying to get... I can see what he's done. He wanted to get the right depths and these wood laminations were a bit thinner than on the drawing. Ah, okay. So he sort of put it there and then we have to put solid wood on the outside where it counts. Ah, okay. It's alright, it looks like you can. What do you think about this repair in general? That's fine. We've yeah. taken the screws out. I've There's actually put, one there. I put three in. Huh? I left three screws in. I would take them all out. Are they stainless? Yeah. yeah. Well, if they're stainless you can leave them in. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then so we just it's not need to get a planer on here to yeah. smooth it all off. It all looks. You've been around, and that's the only bit you found as well. Um, there is uh, on this side. So this I've not really uh, excavated yet. That doesn't look bad actually. I don't think. It's just a bit of. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at the first beam repair that I did okay and see what you think of that <laughs> yeah the first beam yeah. yeah well obviously I agreed with other people's comments that scarfing is better yeah I yeah. think the, the minimum scarf length should really be five to one okay minimum yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, when you do a mast, you go ten to one or something like that. Yeah. Which means your scarf, if if your wood is this thick, you go ten times bigger than that. But five to one for something like this would be something. Okay. That one you could have scarfed that way in. Yeah. But the thing is, it's only part of the beam. Mm. When you look at the cross section, I think it's only a third of the actual beam that you have replaced. Mm. So there's still two thirds that has the full continuous strength. Mm. And this. And the compression is fine. It's only when the beam is under tension there that yeah. there's a possible chance of it separating. Yeah, separating there. But I don't think that will happen. Okay. I wouldn't worry too much. Uh -huh. It's a pretty substantial strong beam. Yeah, I mean yeah. we'll we'll trial her out a lot. But uh, in future, when you do do something, try and make a horse scarf. Yeah, but, I, but uh, yeah, I'll go for five to one minimum. Yeah. But then, in a case like this, what sort of tools would you use to get the scarf? Uh, um, well, if you if you can awful. get an electric planer in it, that's the easiest. Um. But uh, in this case, obviously, the piece of wood you splice in, you can on the bench plane an angle on. Uh. But the bit that where you splice it in, you will probably have to use a chisel and uh, stuff. Uh, okay. Sharp and just a chisel. lot of patience and sharp uh, sharp now chisel. one thing you did you glued it in and you you took the angle off afterwards now mm. i would have taken the angle off before uh, okay. on the bench with a nice plane and much easier yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. and then get it as much close to, as possible to fit mm. if it really fits already before and then glue it in and then you have yeah. a minimum of trimming afterwards i learned that the hard save way saves you time yeah definitely yeah. learned that the hard way took yeah. me a whole day to get it down yeah i saw you do that on the video <laughs> mm. you could do that easier mark yeah. <laughs> i'm sure a lot of yeah. people think that when they watch the videos yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the other hand it's good if you did everything perfect they would get bored with you mark. yeah exactly. now they've got something to comment on and they can keep on <laughs> watching you so I wonder if he's going to get better yeah, I wonder yeah. how he's going to do the next job so <laughs> I think that's but uh, I think you've got a good boat here you know yeah yeah one thing I, I was looking at when you're, you were working with those center boards but if you leave it like this you're going to get a hell of a lot of turbulence when sailing uh, okay so if you're not fitting the center board now what I can see there is some filler in there that was actually yeah. put in there to fit the board better yeah. As though there was a board once. So I just wonder whether there was a board once and you, there didn't, could, there could and be. you didn't get it. Yeah. Um, what you probably best do now is if you can get some polyurethane foam yeah. and make that fit there and then just put a little bit of glass over it. Okay. It doesn't have to be very strong. Yeah. But just it's waterproof. Waterproof it. And then put a waterproof cover on the deck as well yeah if this is waterproof then you won't get water inside mm. you will probably find also actually if you take all the sails down 
Yeah. The boat will turn B1. Uh. And even in a 4.7, you will only have one, one and a half knot drift sideways. Uh, okay. Sideways. We try to. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> these boats have a tendency, if you do nothing, they will turn B1 and stay uh. that way. Ah, uh, okay. So, unless the gale gets really severe, yeah. You can always just drop all sail, and just do nothing. Yeah, yeah. And let the boat just drift sideways, and you don't get a lot of drift. Uh, uh, uh. You know, and, and he actually measured it with the GPS, uh, one and one and a half knots in about a four seven. Whoa. And whoa. Uh, the boat was very quiet and peaceful doing that. Yeah. yeah. And the action of the boat in sideways to the waves is it? Well, it's all right. It will just lift one hole and then the other hole. Yeah. Um, they've been in very big waves sideways. Yeah. Skya. We did went through really severe gales with both sideways. Yeah. They smack into the holes a bit, but yeah. because you don't have a lot of freeboard and you've got flow through decks, uh, that yeah. water can go. Uh, oh, just, just comes yeah, out. Yeah. Push through. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that comes later in your life. Yeah. <laughs> you start yeah. sailing. <laughs> what do you reckon? Do you want to have a look inside? Yes, please. It's a bit of a mess. Well. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Some problem up there, isn't it? But oh, that's where somebody had a window hole and it's been closed up. Yeah. So I thought that the beam trough was going to be rotten. Yeah. Um, but it isn't. Well, I don't know what what this. What if it's just? I wonder what that is. It doesn't feel rotten. Maybe I think you should. Leave it alone. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good to me. This side is all right. It all feels good. Oh yeah. I mean, you can sand it out a bit. Yeah, I'll, put, I'll pull a bit the paint of off. But I, I wouldn't worry at the moment. It's not it's nothing critical now. Okay. I don't think because that plywood sounds good from the other side. Yeah, because we just. Yeah, it's just one layer. I don't know whether the, what happened there, why the... I, I, well, I think maybe the moisture has come spread from here, this, maybe. This all feels firm. It doesn't sound at all rotten, actually. Yeah. And, and, and the glass is all good condition on this side. Yeah. So, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, one day you can just sand this back and fill it a bit so it looks nicer, but... Yeah. Now this obviously has got rot in it. Yeah. I think you want to get that whole bit of inner plywood. Try, oh. try cutting it away here. Mm. Always good to make, to draw lines when you start cutting and say I'm going to cut it to this size. Mm. And then as you find saw so neatly cut it out, mm. peel it all out. If you don't find it rot, it's further draw a second line and cut a bit lower yeah, until keep you going. find. It. <laughs> Hopefully it stops at some point. It stops at some point. Now this outer plywood seems okay at this. Yeah. But it looks it's like there was a hole cut there, wasn't there? Yeah, they've As though they wanted a window there. Yeah. Because these windows are all on the inside under the deck or mm. hidden by the deck. Maybe he built them and didn't really think about it too much. Yeah. And also yeah. the chain plates. Oh. Is this the original paint? Uh I, I don't think so. Have you, well, have I, you, you I haven't, haven't painted it. So no. this one came out from underneath the filth? Um, yeah. Because this looks perfect. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. No, I thought it was more uh, flaky. Well, you've got some flaky bits here and there, obviously. Yeah. But otherwise, it's generally it's very good. It looks like it's been recently painted. Yeah. You've got the plywood outer skin. Yeah. Probably 9mm plywood as, as to design and then the stringers mm. and then he's filled in the stringers in between I think with yeah, polystyrene foam pieces and then he, yeah. he looked a thin layer of plywood on this side which is probably only 3mm uh, or so, 3-4mm plywood yeah, yeah. as you can see here. So you have got insulated yeah. holes everywhere which That's is really, really nice. Really nice. Because on our Iceland trip. Yeah. <laughs> We only had nine millimeter ply between us and about three degrees water on the outside. So you sailed to Iceland? From Scotland. Yeah. 
It's not actually that far. It looks much further on the chart. Ah, it's okay. a projection. But we sailed to Faroe Islands and now to Iceland. Yeah, so that's where the chain plates were or planned to be. They were never fitted. Uh, I, 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 I do you have, have the plates. Plate. You have yeah. them, but they're not. They were not. Space, isn't it? It's damp in there still. What have you done on the outside? Did you glass over it? Just put some tape over the holes. Yeah, to see it. So, what may be worthwhile is get a much bigger drill and yeah. drill them out yeah and then have a look what you see inside there okay and and then if you if it is all right then fill that whole big hole up with an epoxy filler uh. and then drill new holes through that for your bolts okay but I, I would drill them out much bigger so you can actually see what's going on in there yeah there's, there's some odd yeah, because I don't know if, because obviously you've got a fillet here. But but there's what? damp brown stuff there, which is not great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so would there also be a fillet on the inside next to the insulation? Um, I guess we, we could have a one look way at to the... Well, originally, you see, what happens was you, you would have the, the outer plywood, bulkhead against it and fillets. Mm. And there was a stringer here. But then he's filled in the space and put this one on instead. Yeah. Yeah, so what's probably a good idea is either drill out or, or cut out. You can do it even with your fine saw. Mm. Little holes just through the inner thin plywood. Mm. And then have a look what you see behind there. Yeah. But maybe a fillet in the actual corner. In which case you just need to cut a much bigger hole and put more epoxy filler in there. Okay. Well, you can see there, yeah. the, uh, whatever glass or whatever was on the outside of filler is, is broken away, that's why yeah. it looks. So get a chisel and then I peel that all back. Yeah, I think it's, it's filler. Yeah, no no glass at all. Just no, but it, get that old filling piece out again and put a new bit in. Yeah. And, uh, now they've done the same on the other side. Is that the same problem? Uh, not as bad over there. No. But you may also want to redo that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Now, if your boat's in the water yeah. and you've got to do this stuff afloat, set yourself up some sort of, dinghy. I don't know, Make platform or your dinghy underneath so that you've got something where things fall into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and set up some umbrellas. If you uh, can do it before it goes in the water, even better. Yeah, I've got uh, yeah. Seven, seven days. So what do you think of the windows? Well they look well stuck to me and if that tape is as strong as they say it is I, I have heard of actually I was just talking to a chap who has this beautiful Tiki 30 he came to the hurry and he refitted his windows but he's got bolts in his windows ah, okay. and instead of any mastic he used the tape that yeah. had just stick on one side and he said I stuck it on the wood and then the window just goes on and it acts like a compression seal. It was yeah. different from this. Ah, okay. And he was very happy with it. But this seems to stick well. And uh, yeah. I will certainly be interested to see it. But your, your silicon around the edges is good and neat. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so, uh, we'll, only time will tell. Only time will tell. Mm. They're relatively small windows, so if you have a problem, you can always yeah. temporarily make something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can get a piece of plywood and. A, yeah. And have some bars of wood and two bolts through it, and you can clamp them on the outside. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so over the last few days, we've uh, taped off the water line. Hanukkah was just saying it's always better to have a slightly higher water line, but we'll see. We'll see if uh, the line that we've done is uh, is okay. If you come with your spirit a level, <laughs> and you hold this on the hip. if you can hold this like that to a spirit level. Eighty actually from from here, Perfect. so that should be all right. 
That's what it's I was just, aiming for. Yeah, but it's only be above your full load water line. It's just how much, much, how much do you want to be above that? Oh. Because the water does this all the time, <laughs> and then it leaves a horrible green smudge there. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> the actual water may be somewhere. If you're low, it may be somewhere here. Right. So you are a little bit above it. A little bit of a dip there, up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, the way yeah. to do that, by the way, if you don't do it, is you, t you get a nice wide tape yeah. and you start at one end and stick it on and you do it with two people, one sticks it on and then the other one you unroll really long lengths and, and you side down it as you're sticking it on. Yeah. And then the other person, when you say yes, can just stroke it gently on, not too mm. heavy yet, and then you carry on unrolling the tape all in one piece. Ah, you know, okay. and then it's sight again and you put it on yeah until you get to the end and then you go and look at it all and if you don't like it you can peel a bit off again and stick it back on again uh, when you stretch it you hold it tight and you pin it on like that wow. so i'm not saying it's going to be perfect but that's the way pen or pencil this is my drawing board amazing i hope you're watching dad because uh, this one's for you now if this is the bow okay I reckon they should try and put these motors here. So we're going to have a water line here, right? Yeah. Now we're going to have to, you've, your dad's making these sleds. Mm. They may need to go further forward than the distance we've got there. We'd have to have a look at measurements actually. Right. Again, the best thing to do is, is take a drawing with the correct measurements out of there. Make a little cardboard pattern off the sled from the drawing you've got to mm. the same scale. Mm. Measure your outboard motor measurements as well. Even cut out a little outboard motor with yeah. the right leg. And, and just try and configure it like that. And then you may need to make a box that sits lower here mm. and maybe carry on beyond the beam a bit. Mm. Something like that, under which this hinges may be here, okay? Yeah. Because you need enough space between there and there for your motor. To, to yeah, yeah, you don't want it aft under the beam here. Uh, so this may be a bit more this way. So your motor hangs on there. The head of the motor will be here. with your propeller going in there, okay? Well, I would have it level, actually a little bit lower. Level with the side of your decks there. The beams are a bit higher, uh, okay? And then, the and, and, and then you would have these lugs there and there. And yeah. a pin there, and a pin there, the pole, that yeah. holds the whole thing to the beams. Okay. Yeah, so you have a cross beam that looks like that, and you make like a lug out of hardwood. Yeah. And then you've got a hole in it, and then your box sits there, and, and that pins through, and you've got to have nice pads on the inside of, of the box there. And again, you have got these motor boxes. Your dad's making just these bits. Uh. But there is, you have the drawings for the boxes. Yeah, that yeah. I made the they beams. may need to be a bit deeper than on okay. the other boats because your beams are very high up. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a great height. So that's why this box will need to hang lower. Okay. okay. Uh, well, you would have a lid on top. Uh, uh. So when we're looking at this space, we have a motor box here and a motor box there, and in between, you can have a slatted deck either level with the tops of them or you can put it lower down here and you've got like a little well with a seat either side and a deck in the middle oh, yeah? again like the 38 okay and your beams are running front and back of it while Hanukkah's here and I have her brains and we're gonna measure a mast yeah. because he's got this mast which obviously was a second hand mast from a monohull I reckon mm. it's a good substantial mast but the fittings are not quite the same as on the length looks about right we're going to measure it okay i measured 6.5 there and 6.6 .6 here okay so it's basically halfway is your spreader okay, okay? and the total is 12 13.1 meter total. 
So the mast is the right length, you just it's said. the right length. Okay. Perfect length. Okay, so that is good. Because here we've got uh, 43 feet, 13.1 meters. Ah, okay. okay. So here, this here, that's where that spreader is on your mast. So it's not that different from that. And then you've got a big roller reefer at the front here. So it may have one big head sail, yeah. in which case you could put a shroud from this point rather than from there. Okay. If you want to have a stay to put a small storm jib or something on. Yeah. And that normally you sail it more as a slip with this sail and, and a roller head sail. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then keep an inner stay here. And then from that point, you want to have some aft shrouds as well, because there mm. is a bracket for that. Yeah. So you, you have a, but you, yeah, I don't think you need a spreader to be quite honest, because oh, really? the boat's so wide, you see. Spreaders oh, are yeah. monoholes because their staying angle is so flat. Oh. That's why they have spreaders. Yeah. I mean, if you have a weak mast, you can have a, a diamond stay on it yeah, and use yeah. the spreaders for that, which is a possibility. But I'm not sure this mast needs that. Ah, I like the idea of no spreaders. Now, you see, this mast doesn't have spreaders if you look here. Ah. But y your fastening is there, okay? Yeah. So you can have your inner shrouds. You can even take them all the way to the outside actually from uh, that point okay. and then you've got a good wide angle on them. Yeah. Okay. And okay. then you've got cap shrouds which can go to those holes that we were looking at mm. from the top. Then you've got a, a back stay from the top of the mast. Yeah. You can add to that to a, a bridle at the back actually. So I literally have only scratched the surface on what Hanukkah and I talked about. That visit was so helpful. I feel even more optimistic. A lot of the things that were worrying me are no longer worrying me. A lot of things that I thought were super fixed and there's only one way to do it. There are many ways to do it. These boats have many options in terms of the how you want to tweak it, how you're going to have it. So particularly getting a lot of information on the rigging, I know that's further ahead, but that has really eased my worries because that's going to be a huge job. And obviously my number one goal is to get sailing this year. So that's on my mind. Anyway, next week, uh, well, in fact, as of recording this ending video, uh, I have three days to go back in the water. Uh, I've done some anti-fouling, and uh, there's still a lot, a lot to do. So pretty stressful few days coming up. Stressful, try not to get stressed. Busy, let's say busy. Just a huge thanks as always to the PayPalers, the coffeeers, you incredibly generous people. Uh, like I said last week, it's thanks to you guys and everyone who's watching that uh, I don't have to spend too much time or spend any time dealing with any sponsors or anything. In the future, I'll probably do it when I have more time on my hands but yeah thanks to you guys I can um, pretty much uh, definitely not cover the costs of the materials that I'm buying because there's a lot but like I've also said it's all within budget so but yeah you guys are helping me to you know not spend too much and not eat into the budget too much so thank you so so much next week they put me back in the water whether that's going to catch up to the video because there's going to be a lot of stuff in there we'll see but again thanks for watching